Uh, hello, um, I'm Lisa. Thanks for letting me set up a Zoom interview to talk to you. Of course. We're flattered you asked. Hi, I'm Cheryl. Have you ever quilted before? Uh, no, I've never made anything. Uh, this interview is for the local magazine, The Cracked Crab. I, I don't usually do this, but the editor asked if I could fill in. They try to highlight a different group each issue, and, well, they thought you might like to be featured next month. Well, aren't you sweet? And they thought of us. Well, we're just a little quilting group. I don't see why anyone would be interested. Speak for yourself, Clara. I think it's about time. I'm Judy, and that's Clara. She fancies herself the leader of our little group, but that just isn't so now, is it, Clara? That's enough, Judy. You're just sore because you're the junior member. We've been together for a long time. We don't always get along, but we do like making quilts. So what is it that you'd like to know, dear? Uh, uh, let me just get something to take some notes. <laughs> um, I've never done this before, so I'm sorry in advance if I kind of wander all over. <laughs> well. Uh, how did you all get together? And how long have you been a group? And how many of you are in the group? There are four of us. And, um, well, there should be five. <laughs> but <laughs> poor Charlene. Oh, uh, well, that doesn't concern you now, does it? I'm Clara. and He knows. Well, she doesn't know Susan. You didn't introduce her, Judy. That's Susan. She's the oldest member. Really? Oh, not the oldest in years. Uh, the one who's been here the longest. You could say that she started the whole thing. Oh, uh, and how did you do that, Susan? Oh, she won't tell you. <laughs> She's kind of shy about telling, aren't you, Susan? You know, I think it's a high time everyone knew, if you ask me. Well, no one's asking you. Remember, Judy, you're the junior member. We've been together 32 years altogether. Uh, that would be Susan and me. And, of course, poor Charlene. And then Cheryl and Judy joined later. But we're always willing to add new members, if, if you qualify. We have some pretty specific guidelines. Most people who come just end up visiting and don't stay in the group. We have to be very careful on who we accept. Uh, because of their sewing ability, right? No, no. Anyone can learn to sew. That's the least important part. Uh, then what are you looking for in a member? Well, they have to have a, a shared background. Uh, not culturally or ethnically, obviously. <laughs> a shared past. A common life experience. Uh, like you're all widows or single parents, like that? Something like that. And then if they do, then they are in. So what qualifies one to join? Well, it's not exactly one specific thing. Right, Susan? Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I think we can show you how we decide. Uh, oh, uh, okay. Um, what do you want to know? Oh, did you grow up around here? Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> I've lived my entire life right here on the Puget Sound. I've always been an island girl. That's in your favor. Pretty rural? Uh, yes. Uh, we actually lived on a small island that you couldn't even get to by ferry. Dad had to take us back and forth by boat. Yeah. Not much in the way of social services, right? <laughs> I mean, no fire department, no police. Uh, yeah. It was okay, though, because the residents pretty much knew each other and kept tabs on what was going on. You know, we had a neighbor who got drunk every Friday night, like clockwork. And when he got a little too buzzed, some of the men would head over and, you know, make sure he got home. Stuff like that. That must have really been a tight community. It was. It, it, it still is. It's like everybody knows everybody else's business. 
but still there are lots of secrets. <laughs> are there ever? You know, bad things happen on little islands. People disappear. For good reasons. Some really good reasons. And there's nothing like a group of friends. I mean, really close friends who understand and help out when bad times come. And listen when you want to talk about it. And help solve problems you may be having. Yeah, that's so true. It, there's times when I feel like there's no one to talk to about really important stuff. Bad stuff? Like Charlene? Huh, Susan? Sometimes you just need a friend when things get to be more than you can bear. Charlene was there for me. I'll never forget that. What happened? You can't write about this. Nobody can write about this. It must have been terrible. It, please. I was, I was 22, it was the 70s, and I met this guy, Greg. I thought he was so nice and kind and loving, and he was, the whole time we dated. He'd bring me flowers, he'd surprise me with little gifts. <laughs> he even carved me a ring out of a whale's tooth he found on the beach. Scrimshaw it all over the ring. It's amazing. So, even though my parents thought it was a bad idea, I ran off and got married three months later. That's, uh, that's, uh, when the beating started. Just a little stuff at first, you know. Get mad at something and give me a little whack. Dinner was late. Laundry wasn't done. I didn't laugh at his jokes. Stung, but didn't leave a mark. And after, he was so sorry. They're always so sorry after. You ever have anything like that happen to you? We have all been there. It's another point in your favor about joining, huh? Next thing you know, he's shoving me up against the wall, throwing me across the room. Can't go out because I'm covered in bruises. I, I didn't know what to do. So I, uh, I called Charlene. God bless her. Did she help you get out? It's an island. I'm on this little island. There's no getting out. Who's going to take my word for it? Certainly not any of Greg's friends or family. But Charlene had lived through it. And she figured out a way to help. We've heard about what you've been going through, Lisa. We want to help you out. Uh, what? Uh, what? What do you mean? Little islands have big ears, hon. We heard what Mark's been up to. Wait, wait, how, how do you know about Mark? And we want to help. The way Charlene helped Susan. Only we've improved on it over the years. You see, Susan helped me. And Clara helped me. And Cheryl helped me. And now I want to help you. We all do. I know you think you came here to interview us, but we set this up to interview you. I, I, I still don't understand. We're going to help you make Mark disappear. Uh, you're what? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, you know, what if he finds out? I mean, my God, do you know what he's going to do to me if he finds out? Don't act like you don't wish it every day. We know you do. We've all been there, don't you see? 
and by helping each other, they can never pin it on the abused wife. Oh, it's a wonderful, wonderful plan. Darlene thought it up, only she didn't quite figure out every angle and, oh God, how I miss her. She just didn't account for everything. But we figured it out now, and it's worked perfectly since then. Husbands die every day. They fall off ladders. They drown. They drive into trees. They go hunting and never return. And the only thing you have to do is join the quilting circle. You'll be here when it happens, and then, and then you can make these lovely patchwork quilts. That was my idea. You always were good at recycling. <laughs> Nothing gets wasted except him. And just look at the lovely things we do with his clothing after. The best thing those men ever do. Provide fabric for quilts. Atta girl.